When making decisions about medical procedures, we yearn for complete information about the risks and benefits. Unfortunately, we will never know everything. The question is, when do we know enough to be reasonably assured that undergoing a particular procedure or taking a particular drug is worth the risk? Consider blood transfusions, for example. When would you have deemed blood transfusions safe enough to consent to one? We'll start at the beginning. Decision point number one in 1665. Richard Lower solved a fundamental problem of blood transfusions, clotting. Once exposed to air, blood quickly clots, making it impossible to transfuse. It worked, saving the dog's life. Basic Books, September 2021 Two years later, four blood transfusions were performed by linking the arteries of lambs and calves to the veins of people suffering from diseases ranging from persistent infections to schizophrenia. Each of these animal-to-human blood transfusions were accompanied by fever, chills, back pain, darkened urine, nosebleeds, and an intense burning sensation at the site of the transfusion. Would you have chosen to have received a blood transfusion in 1667? Actually, you wouldn't have had the choice. In 1667, Pope Innocent XI signed an order banning the procedure for Catholics, arguing that doctors performing it were playing God. Two years later, the French Parliament enacted its own ban, and eleven years after that, the English Parliament did the same. More than two hundred years passed before anyone dared to try again. Decision point number two Once the bans faded, doctors began to experiment with human-to-human -human transfusions, but transfusion reactions were still a problem. Then, in 1901, Karl Landsteiner, a young researcher working in Vienna, Austria, found the cause of transfusion reactions. Landsteiner took serum and red blood cells from colleagues and identified two different proteins, A and B, on the surface of red cells, which could be present alone or in combination, producing the A, B, and AB blood types. Blood without either of these proteins was labeled type O. Landsteiner found that serum from someone with type A blood destroyed red cells from someone with type B blood, and vice versa, causing potentially fatal reactions. Landsteiner's findings allowed for the first successful human-to-human -human transfusions. Would you have chosen to have received a blood transfusion in 1907? Unfortunately, some blood transfusions with the right type of blood still caused serious reactions. As it turned out, Landsteiner wasn't quite finished. In 1919, he identified yet another protein on the surface of red blood cells. Rh so-called because he found it in rhesus monkeys. Decision point number three by the 1930s. Physicians had syringes, needles, stopcocks, and glass tubes coated with paraffin that eliminated the need for direct artery-to-vein transfusions. Further, by adding a 0.2% solution of sodium citrate, blood could be prevented from clotting, allowing blood to be stored. Blood banks were born and blood transfusions became more commonly available. Would you have chosen to have received a blood transfusion in 1930? Around this time, it became clear that the risks of this procedure did not end with transfusion reactions. Please support my channel to grow by pressing subscribe button and the bell icon, we will notify you technological news. Thank you.